Lesson 3 starts off with a review concept. It says, let R be the region enclosed by the graphs of the two functions that you see here. Y equals the natural log of X squared plus 1 and Y equals cosine of X. So let R be the region enclosed by these graphs. Part A wants us to find the area. So we will start off with a graph of these two. This is calculator active. So I'm going to draw a set of axes. And you should be graphing this in your calculator. Okay, so the first function, the natural log function, uh, when we graph it, it's going to look something like this locally. It's going to continue to have uh, behavior to the right and left. But I just want to take a look at the graph where these two are bounded. And then the cosine function will look something like that. So these are both even functions, and if I drew it correctly, I should have portrayed a somewhat symmetric region R. This goes from A to B. And if I lightly shade that region as follows, and it's always customary to draw a rectangle representation. Okay vertical, where the top of the rectangle is the blue and the bottom of the rectangle is the yellow. So we're going to set this up like we did earlier. And our area equals our integral from A to B of each rectangle, where each rectangle has a height of cosine x minus natural log x squared plus 1. Those are the height of all the rectangles, and we're infinitely summing the rectangles from the first rectangle at A to the last rectangle at B. Each rectangle has width infinite small width of dx. Now, of course, we need to also use the calculator to find these points of intersection. So the point of intersection of A is negative 0 0.916. And the B point of intersection is positive 0 0.916. Again, this is symmetric, so these will be the opposite of each other. And so here we have it. This shaded region is this kind of eyeball-looking shape or a football-looking shape. And that starts off the, the region which will carry through the rest of the problems. All right, so let's take a look now at part B. Here's where it gets interesting. In this problem, picture a block of cheese with some funny shapes, and we're going to slice into the block of cheese. Suppose the cheese is flat up against the screen, so the base of it is sitting where we see this shaded region here. So this is the base of some cheese, and then the cheese is going to come out at you. And that's what these problems are looking at. We're looking at slicing into the cheese and cr looking at cross sections. So let's take a look. I'm going to recreate the axis, and you'll want to do this too. Uh, same x axis, but I'm going to put the y axis on a slant. The reason I'm going to put it on a slant is I want to look at this in some perspective. So I'm going to take my two curves again. Remember this eyeball, football-looking shape. Uh, there's the top of it. And the bottom of it looks like this. Okay. That gives us, gives us some perspective. Now again, the cheese is going to come off of that base. And the problem reads, the base of a solid is this region R. That's what we're discussing. The base of the solid is this region R. And every cross-section of this solid or cheese perpendicular to the x-axis is a square. So that means if I cut into the cheese, I'm going to cut perpendicular to the x. So here's my x-axis, and I would cut into the cheese like here perpendicular to the x-axis. That shows up here perpendicular. So if I cut into the cheese, I'm going to make uh, a cross-section shape. So let's see if we can't draw that. The cross-section of this 
is going to be a square. So if I come over down here and cut into it, feel funny, haha, <laughs> cutting the cheese, I'm going to make another square. And down here, we're going to have like little squares. See that? And we're cutting into it. So every cross section perpendicular to the x axis is making a square. And the shape would look something like the figure I have carefully drawn here. Now, you need not be able to draw so precisely like I have in the second graph, but this gives you a visualization of what the cheese might look like. It's smooth here along the top, but it sort of pinches down on the edges. So, the idea is every cross section is a square, and the area of a square, it, you should know, everyone should know, the area of a square is the base as the base, and it's going to be the base times base, because each of the sides of a square are the same. So it's going to be base squared. So we've got to figure out now what the base of any one of these squares here, so I'm looking at this square, the base of the square is what we're looking at if we look at part A, the base is this red distance from the blue to the yellow. So my base is going to equal in this example the cosine of x minus the natural log of x squared plus 1. It gives me the entire base and I need to square the base in order to get the area of any one of these squares that are cross sections. So now the volume is going to be an infinite sum of these squares, infinite sum of these areas, with each of them with an infinitely small thickness. And we'll take it from the first square at A to the last square at B. I'll come over here and label this from A to B. And we already know those values here. So that gives us then the integral from A to B cosine x minus natural log x squared plus 1 quantity squared dx. That would give me the volume of the entire block of cheese, the entire solid, where every cross section is a square. Part C, very similar. We're going to draw quickly again. I have my x-axis here. I have my y-axis on more of a slant give me some perspective. I have my two functions, one for the cosine x, that's on the top, and the other for the natural log function, which is on the bottom. I have my eyeball football looking shape. This time it says every cross section perpendicular to the x-axis will be a rectangle, but this rectangle will have a height of 5 everywhere. Every rectangle will have a height of 5. So let's suppose that I went up 5 units there. And a rectangle over here would be the small little base, but it would have the same height, height of 5. So it would be a skinny, tall rectangle. Ones in the middle would be wider base, but again, still have the same height of 5. And with all these rectangles having the same height, we would have a uniform uh, uniform height of the of the cheese block, if you will. Um, let's take a look at the kind of complete picture of that, like that. So the area of each rectangle will be the base times the height, but the height is always five. So five times base gives us the area of any rectangle in the region, any uh, rectangle that's a cross section. So then that's going to equal 5 times the base, which we've already established, cosine of x minus natural log x squared plus 1. And so the volume is going to be the infinite sum from A to B of each one of these rectangle areas with a thin thickness of dx. So I'm going to pull out the 5 and I'll take the integral from a to b cosine x minus natural log 
as the base, that entire quantity as the base, dx. If I infinitely sum them, I get the volume of this shape right here. Next example, x-axis. I'm drawing this pretty quickly here. My x-axis, my y-axis on a slant. I've got my two curves. I've got natural log one that comes down, my cosine one on the top, the eyeball football looking shape. This time in part D, every cross section perpendicular to the x-axis will be a rectangle again, but this rectangle is going to be twice, the height is going to be twice the base. That's what it tells us in the problem. So if I come over here, I got a little rectangle again, and it will be twice the base, but it will not be as high as the one over here because that base was larger over here. If we cut it here, I have my largest base. One, two, twice the base comes up like that. And that picture will resemble the one we did in part B, where it pinches down at the ends, but gets taller up in the middle. And so we write now the area of a rectangle here is going to be base, and its height is going to be twice the base, so 2 base. Simplifying that gives me 2 times base squared, or 2 times cosine x minus natural log stuff quantity squared volume equals infinite sum of areas which is the infinite sum a to b I'll pull out the two cosine x minus natural log x squared plus one quantity squared dx part e Every cross-section perpendicular to the x-axis is an equilateral triangle. Ooh, that's kind of interesting. So we've got a base here, and all the sides are the same length. One's in the middle, a bit taller, like that. And the area of an equilateral triangle is going to equal one-half the base and the height of an equilateral triangle is equal to rad 3 over 2 times the base. That's going to be the height of the triangle. So if I put this together, I have rad 3 over 4 times the base squared, which equals, in terms of our diagram, rad 3 over 4 times cosine x minus natural log function quantity squared and the volume infinite sum of areas as we've repeated several times which is the integral from a to b I forgot to pull out the radical 3 over 4 but that's okay it's allowed to go inside as well so I have the cosine of x minus natural log x squared plus 1 quantity squared dx. That drawing is pretty interesting here. Uh, pinches at the edges, but it has this sort of sharp top to it. So if I ran my finger along that, it might even cut my finger if I ran along this, this path here. Okay, we're ready for the last one. Part F, every cross-section perpendicular to the x-axis will make a semi-circle. Like that, little semi-circles down at the edges, bigger semi-circles in the middle, but all these are semi-circle whose base, so the base is on the region R. Okay, we're ready to look at the area. So the area of a semicircle is one half pi times the radius squared. But what is the radius? The radius goes from the middle to the outer edge, which is half of the base. So that's 
base over 2 quantity squared. So if I simplify this, well, the 1 half squared will give me 1 fourth times the 1 half out front. So that'll be 1 eighth or pi over 8 times the base squared. And the volume is the integral from the first semicircle at A to the last semicircle at B of each area of semicircles with thickness dx, which equals the final answer here. Looks like, again, I forgot to pull out the pi over 8, but that's okay because it's allowed to stay inside. Interesting drawing. If you look at this shape, it resembles like a half a football where the flat against the Cartesian plane and the other pa part is rounded here on the top, so rounded along the semicircles. The one thing you're going to have to be careful about is sometimes, let's give you two functions, let's say one looks like this and the other, let's say, looks like this. Okay, and suppose we're looking at this region R. Sometimes the question will be worded that cross sections are perpendicular not to the x-axis, but perpendicular to the y-axis. So the cross section might come in like this, and you might have, again, like a rectangle whose height is, is 4, let's say. So cross sections might look like that. So that's volume of cross sections.